Hey, what's up? I'm Brompton from Action Adventure, and you're watching The Cookhouse. Order up! Hey, what's up? I'm Brompton. I play guitar and do some singing in Action Adventure. We're a pop punk band from Chicago. So we've actually been a band for like seven, about seven years now. Um, and uh, me, our other guitarist, Warren, and our drummer, Adrian, we've actually been playing music together since we were in high school. So it's been about 16 years. Um, and uh, we've been in and out of projects with each other. And then uh, when Action Adventure finally started, um, Adrian was uh, jamming in another project with Manny. And we wanted to kind of get a, a new project going with me or Adrian. So, you know, he was like, hey, Manny, do you want to jam with, uh, you know, some, some old friends of mine? And Manny was like, sure. Um, then we started jamming and it was cool. We jammed for a few months and then we decided that we wanted like a freestanding vocalist so that I didn't have to sing all the time. And uh, Adrian put up a post on Craigslist and uh, it literally just said 20 somethings looking for singer. That's all it said. And uh, Blake was in uh, other projects in the scene previously. He had taken a little bit of time off. Um, he describes it as that he had really gotten the itch uh, to be in a band again. So, you know, he saw the Chrysler's ad and he was like, you know what, fuck it, let's just, let's just see what happens. Uh, so he like sent us like a resume and everything and um, some like links to his old stuff. And I just remember like, he always brings up the fact that all Adrian said after after Blake sent Adrian like this whole list of stuff was tight. That was it. Then he scheduled time uh, for Blake to uh, come and audition. We'd already been auditioning people for a little bit. Um, and Blake showed up, knocked it out of the park. We pretty much knew immediately that, you know, we wanted him to do it. Um, he came and hung out, we played some video games. We like really hit it off, like the chemistry was totally there. And um, that's how we found our singer on Craigslist. And then here we are, here we are, you know, like seven years later. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a wild ride, but it's, you know, it's pretty awesome. We all got a, a super close friend out of it, so it's great. So we, we write like really collaboratively, and that's a little bit different than you know, other projects that I'm in currently or, or that I've been in or that really any of us have been in. A lot of times, um, you know, when we talk to other bands and, you know, we talk about how writing goes, you know, there's like one or two principal songwriters, like somebody writes a song, like structurally, like a skeleton or whatever, and then they bring it to everybody and, you know, people have their input, put little things in and stuff. But with us, um, Pretty much just anyone can come with an idea and then we uh, just kind of go from there and just kind of like build on top of it and expand on it. Um, we're pretty lucky all five of us are relatively proficient at least at playing guitar. So, you know, people, everyone can, you know, bring riffs forward and stuff like that. So we're really able to kind of capitalize on like, oh, you know, I had this idea with this thing that I was messing around with and, you know, people just like showing it and being like, oh yeah, that's cool. Oh my God, I have like a, I have an idea for that. And then kind of just going and doing, uh, it just kind of snowballing into something. Um, post COVID, because we, you know, for a long time, we couldn't really see each other. It was kind of like that, but what ended up happening was Everybody's sending a bunch of voice memos in like our group chat. Um, and then me and Oren kind of like working like in recording software and kind of, uh, you know, like composing and constructing the overall thing. Um, it's still super collaborative. We, we get on Zoom meetings and talk about stuff. Uh, now we've all been vaccinated for like a few months now, so we've been actually practicing and meeting up and, and getting together and stuff. But before that, uh, you know, it was a lot of um, 
pre-production and like recording at home and sending ideas back and forth. And that's something that we've never really done before, but it's uh, COVID kind of forced us to do it. And it's, it's actually been pretty cool for us to be able to flesh out some ideas. And, you know, maybe there's some riffs in there that like we didn't really exactly know. So like, like writing in the moment wouldn't have really worked out the best, but being able to like sit down and like try out different things and like record it and be like, oh, this this clashes, or like, oh, this, this meshes really well. Um, it's pretty cool. So I, I feel like we'll kind of going forward do some sort of amalgamation of both. Um, but yeah, I mean, pretty it's really collaborative. The main thing is that we're all, everybody's, there's five cooks in the kitchen. So it takes us longer than you, than, you know, a lot of other fans that we know. But um, I, I love it because, you know, if, if I have an idea that I'm like really excited about uh, and, you know, I bring it forward, it'll either totally get shot down, in which case, okay, at least I know that it sucked, or, um, you know, everybody else is like super hyped on it and it's, it's great. It's awesome. It's a film term and uh, Blake went to school for like motion graphics and editing and um, originally the record was going to be called Barricades and then we kind of talked about it and we were like well it's not just about overcoming barricades the whole thing is kind of about being able to like take a step back and like refocus yourself on like your goals and really trying to make sure that you know you're kind of doing everything that you need to do to make the best out of you know the, the short time that we have you know that's that's your life and um it just kind of totally made sense and, and like it it was uh it was the, it was always the title for the song and we decided to make that song the title track because we felt like it um really kind of summed up the way like our headspace when we were writing this record and everything much much more um, eloquently than barricades did because I mean barricades is like super important but you know there was there was a lot more going on with us than just that and uh, I think that's what that's why we kind of landed on fully focus it was a super last minute change too we were literally doing the album art and we were like wait 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 hold on a second what if we did this? And we talked about it for like 20 minutes and then we just made the decision, that's it. There, there are like, we all write lyrics too. I mean, Blake writes the majority of the lyrics, but I mean, there's pretty much, I think, I think there's most of the songs, multiple people have, have, uh, have like lyric passages on. So, I think pull, probably either Pulling Focus or Talk Everlasting are the ones that really are, they just like hit different. I, I just like, obviously there are experiences, so I like super relate to them, but um, you know, we're, we're slightly older. We're like in our early thirties. So Tuck, Tuck really, kind of hits home with, uh, you know, the whole, like, growing up and, and trying to, you know, find your place. And also, you know, being in a, in a band, in a local band at the time, in your, uh, in your, you know, late 20s, early 30s, you know, you, you got friends getting married, buying houses, having kids, you know, and we're, we're all, like, trying to, go on tour for two or three weeks at a time and, you know, live in the van and stuff. So it's different because priorities are different. Oren actually has a child and owns a home. So he, his priorities are just, he's just all over the place. But, um, but, you know, for the, you know, still it's like him trying to find the balance between, you know, home life and band life. And, uh, you know, to, to his credit, he's, he's 
doing it, which is awesome. So hats off to him. Uh, but like, I, you know, I think Tuck is like a really special song because it's, it's a little different than all the other ones. Um, but it, you know, really kind of, it's just about, you know, overcoming the monotony of like the day to day of adult life. And so that, you know, that one kind of hits. I, I think that one does kind of speak to me the most. That and then obviously barricades for, you know, all the reasons, um, just, you know, in like inclusion in the scene and, you know, making sure everybody's represented and, uh, you know, the microaggressions that we faced, you know, being people of color, um, that definitely also obviously hits home. So, you know, as, you know, everything that we talk about in the song and do in the video, we've experienced. So those two are probably the ones that like hit the hardest, but it's not that much harder hitting than the rest of the songs. We don't just kind of like take a whole bunch of riffs and just throw them together and then attempt to write transitions in between each riff. Because, I mean, before, like our songs were way busier. There was like so much more stuff going on. Sometimes like guitars and vocals would clash and it just, you know, um, we, were, we were just, you know, we were younger. A lot of those were written when we were like 23 or even young, some of the, some of the Rumble Pack stuff was written like, like early twenties, even though like it came out when I was 25, like, it, you know, it was like 19, 20 years old. Some of the stuff on there, um, or some of it was written when, you know, I was like 19 or 20. So I just think that over, you know, the past 10 years, we've all just become better songwriters, just better musicians. We're, you know, we're always just trying to be more creative and, uh, you know, just write things. I do think that we we found like a, a pocket in a lot of the songs on this record and that they're a little groovier for lack of a better term. Um, and they kind of ride the groove a lot better. So that's cool. Um, and I, honestly, I mean, I just think it, there's like a huge amount of growth in between. At least listening to them, I can hear like a lot of growth. Specifically between Last Man and Stuntman and Going Heel, there was a, not a huge departure in style. Um, I just feel like we executed it with a little bit more tact. <laughs> that's, that's what I think it was. I mean, you know, as soon as the, every everything is is opening up again right now, so that's awesome. Um, we're working on some fall and winter stuff to get out on the road. Um, you know, we really we really just want to get out there and, and be able to play uh, play some shows. Like that's that's really it, man. The itch is the itch is so real. We we were lucky enough to play a show on the very last day before lockdown happened. We played a show on the Sunday night before lockdown happened on the Monday morning. And um, it was in it was in Wisconsin. And it was just weird because we were like, oh, okay, whatever, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll be playing shows again by summer or whatever happens. That was March, 2020. And here we are now, it's June of 21 and you know, obviously we haven't been able to do anything yet. So really playing shows and, you know, getting some tours booked and stuff. That's the main priority right now. Um, we're also like deep into writing the next, uh, the next record. So hopefully we'll be recording that sometime in the fall or the winter, alternating with touring and stuff. So we're definitely, definitely staying busy and, we got some cool stuff, uh, cool stuff going on that'll be announced probably, I don't know when this is going to air, but uh, we got some cool stuff that'll probably be announced in like July that'll happen. So there, there's a whole bunch of stuff on the horizon. We're not, we're not going anywhere. Knock on wood.
thunder. Thunder. Okay, so that's really tough because I I love beer, but um, you know I don't know if it's just me getting old or just being a baby or whatever. But sometimes you know, just after a, a few beers, you get all like the bloated feeling and stuff. But you don't really get that with seltzer, so like I appreciate that. Um, but uh, you can't beat. Can't, can't beat a good old an old style. So, um, I think I'm gonna choose beer. I think I'll choose beer over seltzer. Well, the answer is smash, but that's a really tough decision. Uh, specific, like specifically for, for our band. Um, but yes, it, it would be smash. We love smash. Um, we, I mean, before COVID, we would play regularly, like together. You know, we'd always like bring a Switch or like a Wii with us and try and play as often as we could on tour and stuff. So it's definitely Smash. But I am a huge Mortal Kombat fan of all of the movies and the games, even the shitty movies and the shitty shows. Um, but yeah, Smash. Warp Tour. Warp Tour. Hands down. I'm like a, you know, I'm like a 90s kid, so, you know, growing up and, and like going to Warp Tour all through like in the 2000s, you know, until 2018, uh, you know, the last one, which we were actually super lucky and like able to play. Um, absolutely Warp Tour. Hands down, there's nothing like it. It's so impressive. And then being able to see like how it actually, like how the, it functions and how they do it every day for an entire summer, moving the entire festival across the tour, like that is nuts. Hats off to them because that was, that was a feat. And I definitely understand why, you know, after doing it for so long, you would not want to do it anymore. Uh, probably the future. I'm gonna just, let's just leave it at the future. It's gonna be the future. Ooh, that's really tough because it's like, being being a mutant would be like really cool as long as I didn't have like a X gene where like, I don't know, I didn't have any cool powers and I was like, suffering the whole time. But like being a wizard is tight because like you can like train and like work at being like a powerful wizard and like, you know, doing that. Um, but it would be really cool to have my power come from inside me instead of just having to study really hard. So I guess if I had to choose and I could pick my powers, I'd want to be a mutant. But if it was just like a, well, you're gonna roll the dice, I'd probably say, no, nah, let's just go to Hogwarts, let's do it. Let's be wizards. Adult mind in a child body, because then I would probably get to grow up again, but I would have the knowledge of being an adult. So I would just, you'd just be the best at everything, theoretically. You know, oh my God, my kids' bodies are so resilient, like they don't have, you know, bad knees and bad backs and they have great metabolisms and like, yeah, dude, absolutely, adult mind and child body, for sure. So, Pepsi's gross. Pepsi is so gross. It's like too sweet and like, I don't know, just, yeah, Coke, Coca-Cola all the way, hands down, for me at least. I actually recently just switched back to Barca. For a long time I used shower gel, but I don't know, like you just, bar soap like feels different. And like a lot of people are like, oh, it dries out your skin. So then you just moisturize right out after you get out of the shower and it's fine. So right now, bar soap. That's a really shitty situation. Both of those are horrible situations. Um, 
I mean, I guess World War Z, I would have a much better chance at surviving. Cause at least I could kind of try and fight back, you know, like if I'm not infected. Uh, Cause Independence Day, they was just bombing sick. They were just taking us out. Like there was no, you know, they were just taking us out. Um, that being said, Independence Day is a much better movie than World War Z. <clears throat> but yeah. I feel like I could maybe survive in like the Walking Dead universe where they're not like insanely strong or insanely fast, but like 28 days later, 28 weeks later, anything where like they run at you like banshees, ain't nobody surviving that. We're done, game over. I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm taking the L either way, but do I have any weapons at all? I mean, either way, the answer is the wolves. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to fight that gorilla because, like, that gorilla can literally pick me up and rip me in half. Um, but the wolves, like, wolves and dogs, like their canines, their noses are very sensitive. So, like, if you hit them in the nose, like, you actually have a chance of like <clears throat> not dying. So, I mean, realistically, like, I would have to be, like, super vigilant, like, timed hits. If two came at me at the same time, probably not gonna, you know, I'm probably gonna take that out. But, like, it sucks, because, like, I am, like, such a dog person, I would never want to do this. But I kind of, I've thought about this before, I kind of feel like if you're getting attacked by, like, a wolf or something, the only way you're gonna survive is like, you gotta be ready to like get bitten, but then you also have to like, you gotta like hit it in its nose and then you you have to like double tap the wolf. Like, like you can't stop. You can't, you can't like hit it and like incapacitate it and try to run away. You have to hit it and then you have to kill it. Like it's not, it's not just gonna run away, you know, and whimper or whatever. It's gonna, it's gonna like get its senses back. It's gonna be pissed. And then it's still hungry and it's gonna try and eat you. So like you gotta you gotta really go for this wolf. Seven, I don't think anybody's taking on seven wolves. I really don't. Um but I also could not outrun a gorilla, nor am I strong enough to really do anything to a gorilla. So we're we're just gonna we're gonna just go with the wolves. Hey, this is Brompton from Action Adventure. I'm on the cookhouse. Thanks for uh, checking it out. Um, make sure you check out Pulling Focus out right now on Pure Noise Records. And uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe.